Okay, this is uh, Simon from the Explain 10 blog. I'm just going to go through and um, show you the basics of using SketchUp. Um, it's not a detailed tutorial, but I think if you follow my uh, video and pause when you need it, you'll um, get the idea. So this is really to show anybody who's thinking of doing scenery development um, the possibilities and how really easy it is. So I just got up uh, my um, Crapware Brick shit house. Sorry for that. Um, but here I'm just um, going around showing you how easy it is to navigate around. You basically use a mouse and the middle mouse uh, scroll key to get different um, viewpoints. And you can also use the standard camera views that I'm doing here. You can look to the, go instantly to the front or the back, the right, left, blah blah blah. And um, very easy uh, interface, much more accessible than Blender. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Um, I'm just learning Blender now and realizing how much more complex it is. But uh, this is just really a fantastic, great start to scenery work. Um, so I earlier worked up a, a little toilet to uh, practice, but now I'll, I'll show you here how we just build one really quickly. Chip built the one on the left. He's by far better, much better than me. Um, but I'm just showing the basics here, so how you can... Um, use some pretty good um, dimension tools to very accurately measure your dimensions so although SketchUp is much easier than Blender it's still quite accurate you can still measure all your stuff in Google Earth and so on and then do like I'm doing here and getting some dimensions to just get it just right unfortunately I'm using some new screen capture software where I act actually didn't capture the bottom right hand side of the screen so you can't see the ruler <coughs> measures measurements so w when I drag around you can actually see the distances that I'm building so here we're just doing some dragging and um, just manipulation of the box you can see you can quite easily make mistakes but control Z is your friend you can undo everything and um, Around here you can see just quite easily just dragging a, a box and it creates basically a door opening fairly quickly. If I was doing it more carefully I would be measuring but just then you saw me go to the left and um, uh, get some references so, so things smart enough for you to um, drag a particular point to an, a known point and I'll remember that point and get the references for you. Use a um, expansion tool here we can easily just take your surface and just make another surface it's a bit of a bit wider a bit broader than the one before it and then you use a drag tool to just drag it on so easy look at it I'm not doing any button presses I'm just dragging and just pressing buttons and then we'll do another one I think we're going to drag this a bit further wider to make the next level of um, roof here there's a little cheat I use here to clean up the roof Yeah, um, just very intuitive. You, you really get the hang of it really um, quick. So here I'm using the dimension again to get an idea of how high to make the door that I'm going to make. Uh, absolutely woeful metal modelling I'm doing here compared to chip, but I'm just doing this really quick. Really is an end to um, do the texturing tutorial later. Um, so just showing you how I basically build a door away from the um, main model. If I do it on the model it will start to create some pretty strange shapes it will drag it around and make a, a, a stupid looking model so I do it separately first and I'm using the angle tool just to put it to an angle similar to what Chip did then push it in. Now, this is unbelievable normally when I do this point it just goes haywire and it's quite quite fiddly but I seem to flick it here where you could, I was able to slot the door in quite nicely and here you can see how you can just so intuitively um, build other boxes within boxes without really causing too much trouble. Sometimes you can. So you can see here, so I've caused some trouble here by dragging the box, the seat, up. But as you'll see, it's easy to fix. See, drawing circles. Just just basic clicking and dragging. Um, no sort of confusing, um, how do I say this compared to Blender, um, you know. 747 cockpit style 1600 buttons to try and f get used to. This is just a few buttons on the left, 
and a couple of right hand clicks. It's more a case of knowing how to undo things, <laughs> that's what I find. You just try and try. So here I've actually, um, I did cut a lot of stuffing around it. I had a lot of problems trying to cut this moon out, um, but got there eventually. And now I'm showing you the resize tool where you just hold it highlight the whole item now you can see me resizing it just really um, quickly to try and make that ridiculously wide toilet look a little bit more natural now I've noticed I've actually stuffed up the uh, right the actual border of the frame of the door it's much more narrow than chip had so now you'll see me sort of hurriedly <laughs> to try and fix that it's just a, this is just a quick fix because mainly yeah, to just show the, the texturing I'm working a lot quicker than I probably would if I was building properly as most people know, I think um, Chip does most of the building anyway. He's, he's very good with um, design. Um, so here I'll show you up with the... Um, you can see the texture of the actual crapware uh, building. And here we're just totally blank. So that's what you're starting off with. Um, we're looking at... Um, and so now I'll show you the basics of texturing within <coughs> SketchUp. Um, Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't matter what you do in SketchUp, uh, texture-wise, you can't actually export it um, at all out to uh, X-Plane. So we have to, we'll talk about that later. But right now, I'm just showing you quickly how I um, and Chip, Chip and I uh, do our texturing in SketchUp. Uh, the SketchUp's got lots of built-in textures. They're all wonderful, fantastic. Um, you can uh, modify them. You can even export them again and, and change them a bit. But again, as I say, you can't actually use them. Um, it doesn't matter how wonderful texturing a chip does when he sends the files to me. I have to do what I'm doing now, which is um, default them to uh, the default texture, which is zero. Highlight the entire bloody object and turn it and destroy all of chip's work. Quite often I use it as a guide, of course, but um, basically you have to strip it right out and um, start from scratch in the method that will be coming up in our next tutorial. Um, right now you'll see me just picking up some little fiddly uh, issues with the model. It's amazing when you work on a model fairly quickly you then have to go over it as I'm doing now very carefully, very um, in a probably close detail to pick up where you've left a gap or in this case we've got a couple of lines that will interfere with texturing uh, later. The fewer lines that you have on the outside of the model the, uh, the easier the texturing, so this back section will only have two textures which will be easy to place the lines there because of the seat on the interior so that's it for now, so I hope you enjoyed this first little taste of SketchUp modelling next tutorial will be the texturing tutorial, see ya, bye